take you to the East Africa um, on the plains where the whole thing started, where black men, in a sense, kicked the whole thing off in terms of humanity. And um, let's look at what happened on those plains because um, I actually think that this whole thing about hyper black masculinity is actually a, a positive. I do think actually there Whoa. is. Let, let, me, let me go with this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I do think there is there is something that is within the culture. It's a stylized thing, and I believe that it's about black male culture. And I don't. I think that a lot of the negative things we've been hearing about it is actually we, we, we've missed a point here. And I think we we can pick it up right from the the start of where this whole thing began. Um, if you if you can imagine what happens in the, in the in the start of the, the culture, the start of humanity, and as I say, Africa is the start of that, is that you, you have a problem with young men. And it's, it's, it's generally across cultures, but you have a problem in the sense of the testosterone we've been talking about. And the fact is that the culture is really about access to females. And so what the older men do is deliberately give those young men, because they want to keep the females to themselves, Essentially, that's really what's going on. But more so, they can't have all these men uh, too early having access to females. So what actually happens is they invent ritual. And um, Aborigines call it the walkabout. But essentially what it is, you send those boys out into the woods. You send them into to, to having a test. Some of them will not, many of them will not come back alive. And... Um, the whole kind of issue of it, get eaten by lions, whatever <laughs> happens to them, that is the story. And um, essentially you delay their access to females. Now, in a sense, what, what, what is that about? The boys come back, those who come back then are able, and it's the dance, it's the initiation rites, it's the, the performance. That, we, that begins the culture. And they dance and they perform in the village and they, and, and they go through those rites and then those initiation rites gives you the access to females. And that's, that's the way the culture builds up. Now, when you're doing that dance, when you're doing that performance, you are exaggerating your masculinity. You're, you, you, you are doing it continually. It's all about hyper. It's all about showing off. And we have, and, and if anything is specific or particular, and I do think it's very dangerous here talking about blackness and, and sexuality and trying, and I agree with you, to try to make it into, into something that's, that's sort of essentialist. But I do think there is something particular about that in the culture. The other thing is about, is particular about sex and hypersex for a particular African, pan African culture, if you like, want to pick it up is that sex is life-affirming. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever go to, I mean, I mean, I mean the notion that, you, 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 that, that, that the man will look at sex, it's what it is, it, you're, you're now killing death. You're actually using it as a format to, to, to sort of go over the other side and you're, you're, you're dealing with death. The other thing which is really interesting is to do with the DJ culture and, and, and a misunderstanding about that. When you're actually competing for the female, back to the, the roots thing again, what you're actually doing is you, you, you're not only trying to impress the woman, you've got the other guy next to you. And so you, what you've got to do, you've got to diss that guy in order to be more attractive to the female. And it's exactly what goes on in DJ culture. What you're doing in that sense is you're, you want to kill the next DJ, not literally, but you want to assert your manhood because that is what is going on in terms of culture. Now, why is that a particular black thing? But mainly because of slavery. Because what happens is that that power is taken away from you. And the only way you can come back to it is, and I hate, and there are no children here, the penis has to conquer the panani. I mean, that really is what is going on here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> a particular culture, and people have come to it and said that that's vulgar, that's, uh, that's sort of sexist, 
But what, what it is, is coming back to that whole notion of, of, of particularly disenfranchised black men having to find a space yeah. to assert themselves. Yeah. 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 And they do it through a metaphor in doing that. Now, I, I admit that in all of that there is sexism going on, but all of that there, is, that there are issues. And that's the background. I'm kind of just run to what I've actually come to talk about, which is, which is about education and my life. Now, can, can I have the, um, the list? My, my background is in education. I've written a book called Black Masculinity in School. It's out of, it's not, it, you can get on Amazon now, actually. You have to pay a big money for it. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's, you know, big money, but anyway, don't worry. I don't get much of it. Listen, um, the, 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 tech, the book itself looked at the way in which, um, at the time, it's still happening now, a lot of black boys were being excluded. I wanted to look at the way in which the subculture of black boys was, was, was impacting on, on, the, on the culture and the reasons for the exclusion. Now, I, I, I talked to some teachers in the school, the school school township, and this is a white teacher talking about um, black boys. Now, I actually, I actually changed my mind. I thought she was actually... The villain here. I've actually changed my mind, and I'll explain why I think she's actually not the villain. And um, I'll just go quickly through it. I think the language of yeah, that's the book. Yeah, I think the language, <laughs> I think the language of many uh, African Caribbean boys is particularly offensive, and it comes from their community. I think it's very widespread in the school, and it's not being taken up. Surely boys will use I say surely boys will use fruity language at this age. What is so bad about the talk of township? It shows a total disrespect for women. It is becoming worse and endemic. Everyone does it right down to the new first years. <coughs> Being a woman in this school, I imagine, is on the same level as a black person getting racist abuse all day. I kind of thought, oh, she's just being racist and stuff like that. But I think what's happening there is the school is collapsing. The school is collapsing, it's, it, it, it's, on, it's going into special measures. There, there are different reasons. So the boys themselves will, and it's almost back to what we go back to East Africa, they will find in that hyper-masculinity an alternative. Yeah? And they will go to that un, unkind of restrained and will go in there and find the alternative, which is what was happening in that school. And so, in, in, in some ways, there is an issue back to the walkabout, back to the ritual of how we, we, we contain this thing. We've got the, 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 the driver is there, the need to kind of, uh, uh, I suppose, go after this in terms of an expression of, your, you, of what you are as a little boy, and you've got the testosterone again driving in. How do you, how do you kind of lock it down? And, and the next slide is... Um, no, 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 I've got time for this, but I mean, in, 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 in Jamaica, we, the, the, the scholars have had the problem because in, 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 in Jamaican high schools where I've worked before, boys are also underachieving. And underachieving in, 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 in quite interesting ways in the sense that, uh, again, this issue about their manhood. I mean, I went, I, 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 I went to some primary schools doing some research, and one of the things I, I suggested to the primary school teachers that, look, what you've got to do is you've got to allow um, the boys to express, in English they were, particularly in English, because what's happening, Jamaica is a bilingual country, but I see essentially the sole language is, 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 is in the nation language, the Patois. However, to, it's, uh, the boys do not like speaking in, in standard English, they think it's a girl thing. And the girls don't, so the girls don't mind speaking in the standard English, and the problem then is when you, the English results plummet for the boys. So I suggest to, the, to, to uh, the female, the feminized space in Jamaica about making the boys read poetry. And the women teachers will not have it. There's no way that any boy going to get up there and read any poetry. Yeah? Um, worse still, uh, let me just do some profanity here. Um, can, can you all say succeed? Succeed. Now say that in the Jamaican way. Succeed. succeed. Now, Jamaican, Jamaican boys would not have that <laughs> word set. I mean, the place was just going crazy in terms of the way in which the, the whole, I mean, for example, the pilots, pilots would come down 
and uh, encourage the students to su be successful, to succeed as a pilot. Boys, I'm not going to any cockpit. Yeah? Um, and so the whole kind of whole no idea of the feminine space is, is, is problematic. So in fact, all the kind of alleged homophobia and the feminization is actually coming back to bite um, our boys in a, in a particular yeah, way. Yeah, uh, can, we, can we move on? Because I've got time. Really. I've got two minutes. I've got two minutes. All right, look, look. here's the answer, kind of straight to the point. I think, I think the answer is to go back to our four, four bears on the walkabout. And I, I invented uh, this program called Generating Genius. And so what I, I realized that what our boys needed was to perform the same sexual kind of desire that was needed inside them on the physical space. They couldn't have that at 12. I wasn't really, I, don't think I, was, a, I think I was a bit too young for sex, I think. So, yeah, I think. Just a bit. Just a bit. So therefore, we're, we're, but they still have urges. So what you've got to do with them is you get that in terms of the intellectual paris. What you do is you put the energy, the same sort of desire to perform, you put that. And so, what, so what I decided to do is I create a program where in fact they could show off their intellectual abilities. Yeah. And they could show off what they could do, not in terms of any kind of sex thing, but what it was is in terms of how they could, um, in science, kind of a challenging subject, how in a, in a public audience with, 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 with authority they could get praise for doing that. Mm -hmm. That is really what kicked my program off. And, and we got that 21 year olds who started off with us when they were 14. They, they, they kept on that program and they all said that that was the reason why they were successful. Mm -hmm. But at that particular time, they were able to divert that sexual urge, they didn't say it, you know, but that urge to sort of, you know, in a sense, demonstrate that kind of, perform that sexual kind of desire, which maybe you would have had in a different way, we did it intellectually. I think that really is the answer. I think that's the, the way forward. So my, my, my contention to this is that don't blame hip hop, don't blame the whole idea of a black male culture. See it very positively. I learned, I learned one thing now, and then I'll finish. Right behind me. Mar Mar Marvin Gaye is, 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 is I think a key example of this because in an interview he said that they asked him, How, um, you know, what's your inspiration? And he said Mahalia Jackson was his inspiration for singing. Now, that's really important because I think what he was saying there was that I, I, I this whole idea that the black men have brought to the whole universe a whole set of singing and music that's very positive and that, that, that's feminine in drive. And I think that we've got to celebrate that and uh, I'm going to get off now. Thank you. <laughs>